Hello class. In this video, we're going to focus on fraction division, specifically fractions divided by a fraction. But before we go into that, I want you to pause this video and write your proper heading in your notebooks, including your first and last name, the date, mathematics, your period number, and the title of this lesson, Fractions Division, Fractions Divided by a Fraction. Pause this video now and write this in your notebooks. Now that we have this in our notebooks, let's discuss. Fraction division is a larger area. In this video, we're just focusing on fractions divided by a fraction. And you can look at my YouTube channel for other fractional divisions, but we're just gonna focus on proper fractions divided by a proper fractions today. Before we start, let's look over our rules. For dividing fractions, we have some basic rules. The first one is we need to change all mixed numbers into an improper fraction. This includes taking just whole numbers and making them into a fraction when they're not attached to a fraction. And you could do that by just putting it over one. So like eight, whole number eight would be eight over one. Whole number 19 would be 19 over one and so forth. The second step was we need to use the KCF, which stands for keep, change, flip. And the flip is really finding the reciprocal of that last term. Um, I know this second part may be a little bit confusing, but when we put it in, um, examples, you'll better understand that. Your third step is then to multiply straight across, which we've done before multiplying fractions. And last but not least, once you're done multiplying, you need to simplify, put it into smallest terms. I want you to pause this video now and write these rules down in your notebooks. Now that we have this in our notebooks, let's look at an exa example of two proper fractions divided by our, uh, another proper fraction. So we have two fifths divided by three fourths. Our first step says that we need to change all mixed numbers or whole numbers into an improper fraction. In this case, there are no whole numbers. It's already written there for us. So step one is already done for us. Step two is then that we need to use KCF, right? I like to write the Digits underneath, K, C, F, just so I, it keeps me organized in my mind of what we need to do. So the first thing, the K stands for keep. So we are going to keep that first term of two fifths and we're gonna rewrite that. Then we look at the C, that means change. We need to change our division. And whenever we change an operation, we change it to our inverse. So the division now becomes multiplication because the inverse to division is multiplication. And then last but not least, we have the flip. That's where we take that next term and we flip it. We find the reciprocal. And by finding the reciprocal, our denominator then becomes our numerator and our numerator becomes our denominator. So since our denominator here is four, it is now our numerator. And since three is our numerator, that is now our denominator. So now we've done step two. Step three is we multiply straight across. So we do numerator times numerator and then denominator times denominator. So we have our two numerators of two and four, so we're gonna multiply that. And our denominators here is five and three, so we're gonna multiply those two. Two times four gives us eight, and five times three gives us 15. And then in our last step, we simplify. And I look at this and my numerator is less than my denominator, so I know I have the whole numbers to simplify. And then I look at the multiple, um, the factors of eight, which is one, two, four, and eight. And if I take any of those factors and I divide 15 by them, I can't get anything less. So my simplified answer is eight fifteenths. Since I'm done with that, I'm going to circle it as my final answer. I want you to pause this video now and write down this problem with all of its work and our answer in your notebooks. Now that we have it in our notebooks, let's look at a little bit more proper fractions divided by a proper fraction, a little bit more difficulty. So here we have six sevenths divided by two twelfths. Again, step one says change all mixed numbers and whole numbers into improper fractions. Since we have no mixed numbers and we have no whole numbers, step one is already done for us. Now we need to go on to step two. 
And again, I write the KCF underneath so that I'm clear of what I'm doing and what step I am. K stands to keep, so I keep that first term the way that it is, so the six, seven stay the same. The C says I change my operation sign. And when we change an operation sign, we like to do that with the inverse. So the inverse of division is multiplication. And last but not least, we have our F, which stands for flip. This is where we find the reciprocal of that next term, which basically means we flip that fraction. What's in our denominator becomes our numerator, and what's in our numerator becomes our denominator. So here I look, the 12 is my denominator in the original problem, so it is now my numerator after I flip it. And the 2 is in my numerator in the original problem, so it is now in my denominator. So the flip, the reciprocal of 2 twelfths is 12, 2, or 12 halves. Now that I'm done with that, I go to step 3 where I multiply straight across. So numerator times numerator, so I have 6 times 12, over denominator times denominator, so I have 7 times 2. And when I do this, and I do 6 times 12, I get 72. And 7 times 2 gives me 14. Now that I'm done multiplying, I can simplify. And I look at this and I go, hmm, my numerator is larger than my denominator. So I know that I have some whole numbers. So say I didn't know my multiples of 14, I could do 14 times 1 gives me 14. 14 times 2 gives me 28. And I have 14 times 3. So it's just like repeating addition and listing it here on the side. All right, so that's 42. 14 times 4 gives me 56. So I'm still not at 72, so I'm going to keep going. 14 times 5 gives me 70. Now, I only need to go up to 72, so I know if I added uh, another 14 to the 70, I'm going to be way higher than 72. So I know my whole number here is 5, so I'm going to write that down as 5. Now, 14 times 5 is 70, so to get this whole number, I took 70 pieces out of here. So I'm only left with 2, so 2 is in my numerator, and then 14. Because I wrote my work here um, on the side, I'm going to just box it off just so it doesn't merge into here. Now I look at this and I can leave this the way alone, but I realize that my numerator and my denominator are both even numbers. So I know I can divide both of them by two. So my whole number stays the same of five, and two divided by two is one. So I have one over, and then 14 divided by two is seven. So I know that my final answer here is five and one seventh. I want you to pause this video now and write this in your notebooks. Make sure that you copy down all the work so you have something to refer to at the end of the video. Now that I'm done with this, let me look at one more um, problem. So I have 8 twelfths divided by 9 11. So first step says, I need to convert all mixed numbers and whole numbers into improper fractions. Since I don't have any here, I know that step one is done. Step two is I must use K, C, F. The K stands for keep, so I'm going to keep the next fraction the same of 8 twelfths. The C means I'm changing my division, so when I change an operation, I do the inverse, and the inverse for division is multiplication. And last but not least, I'm going to flip the last term. I'm going to find that reciprocal. So since 11 is my denominator, 11 is now my numerator. And since here my 9 is in the numerator, it is now in my denominator. So step 2 is done. Step 3 is to multiply. So numerator times numerator, so I have 8 times 11. And denominator times denominator, so I have 12 times 9. And when I do this multiplication, 8 times 11 gives me 88. And 12 times 9 gives me 108. 
I'm done with my multiplication, so I can move on to my final step of simplification. Since my numerator is less than my denominator, I know I have no whole number. So I can try to simplify it by seeing if there's a number I could divide into both of them. And I notice that both of them end in an even number, so I know that they will always divide by two. So I'm gonna divide both of them by two. And I look at this and I go, hmm, 88 divided by two gives me 44, because eight divided by two is four. Now 108 divided by two will give me 54, because 10 divided by two is the five, eight divided by two is the four. When I look here, I notice that they both still end in an even number, so I can divide both of them by two one more time. So 44 divided by two gives me 22, and 54 divided by two gives me 27. So I have 22 over 27. So now that I look at this, I go, well, they don't have even numbers, so I know two doesn't work. And if I try all the digits up to 22 and divide 27 by those digits and 22 by that same digit, there's not going to work because 27 divided by 3 works, but 22 divided by 3 doesn't work and so forth. So I know that this is my final answer, 22 over 27. I want you to pause this video now and write this question and all of its work in your notebooks. Now that I have this in my notebooks, let's try some on our own. So here I have that I want you to do is two ninths divided by two fifths. And the second problem that I want you to do is five twelfths divided by three sevenths. Make sure you write down the question and show all of your work in your notebook. Remember, you may watch this video as many times as you need to, or you could send me messages with any questions. 